It's <laughs> tough, man, you know? Sometimes success is worse than failure. Have you played For Honor? Not yet. I want to play For Honor. Maybe if that's one of those Steam Cell games, I'll grab it. What is For Honor? Uh, it's like another medieval like um, fighting game. And someone else recommended that. I want to say Zach recommended that. I was telling him about Hellish Court. Yeah. And he was like, have you played For Honor? It's on Steam. It's pretty cool. It sounds like For Honor is what he said. He thought it sounded like this game. I'll check it out. Yeah. I, I remember watching um, I remember watching people people play it. And I was curious about it, but uh, I just never, you know, never actually jumped on that. So maybe I'll put that on my queue to grab. For Honor kind of sounds like the title of a Brian Adams song that would go, <laughs> that, that would go with like an '80s movie. You know, it would be like the theme for the movie. You know, and the song would be called For Honor. It would yeah. come out in like 1989, and it would be at the top of the charts for like three or four weeks. Like whatever song he did for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, For Honor seems like. Like, it would be the next song, like, for whatever next movie he did, you know? I will fight for honor. Yeah. <laughs> I will fight. With none of the reverb he drops. The Lost is the name of that game, huh? It looks like it was on the PlayStation 2. Hell has met its match. Interesting. Okay, inspired by uh, Dante's Inferno, huh? The lost development period has always been relatively rocky. You play a while in the game, uh, been described as unstable, a jittery frame rate. Developer chose to switch different graphics engine partway through the project. Lit tech to Unreal. Okay, so that was probably like the birth of Unreal being uh, the engine to migrate to. Also, I've got the whole hit going over here. <laughs> I know. Like, like, what is happening? On, what is happening behind me here? All right. Uh, anyways. Yeah, okay, cool. The Lost. Well, you know what? It's a Bollywood game, but it was on a PlayStation 2? It looks like a PlayStation 2 game. Oh. Uh, uh, maybe they should re-release it somewhere. Does Bollywood make games? Oh, shit. What the fuck? I mean, I know do? their movies look like video games, kind of. Um, hold on a second. Let me get... I have to get chat back up. I don't know. Do, 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 do. Um... I play it quite a bit, and if you would like, I could train you over the top 100 players. Goodness, how many people are playing the game? Uh, never played for honor, but everyone says it's great. It sucks, but it's fun at the same time. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I, I'm into those kind of games too. We got a dip here in a sec, so it was good. To, uh, so have a good game and good luck. Thanks, man. Thanks for Thanks, stopping bro. by. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll probably grab for honor if you pop in, uh, pop into the stream at some other point when I'm streaming in the next. Few days or so, um, maybe really? I'll be playing. It got renamed I did try. To what Agony, other... Queen of Darkness. What like other the Bollywood game? game got renamed? Um, Agony. Hold fast. That's what I got. I got Hold, Hold fast. fast. Nations at War, uh, which is like a strictly multiplayer game. But um, I saw someone made like a Colonizer the game. Well, yeah, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just go looking at the uh... just looking at the little image here of the British soldier. <laughs> He's like. Do what it is you do. Yeah. Um, there was a... I'll try to find it, send it to you, because you'd find it fucking hilarious. There was a Scottish TikTok player, a guy who was cosplaying, I guess, as a Scottish, you know, warrior or whatever, and, that, and his, his little conquest in Hold Fast went viral on TikTok, and it was just oh, hilarious. Right. And I was like, okay, I gotta try this game. I gotta give it a shot. It is kind of fun at times, but, I mean, there are a lot of children playing it, too, so... You know, it's a balance. Uh, got renamed to. I have an idea for an excellent darkness. battle royale game, and I'm just gonna give it out right now I'll because it every now and then, yeah. Hey, follow, hit the follow button, man, or subscribe. Um, if you're watching this on Twitch, uh, hit follow, or though I think that's subscribe, whichever, whatever button you gotta hit. Uh, yeah, just pound the button and then follow me whenever I'm online. I'll be playing something. Sorry, <laughs> Jesus. I had a cool kick drum thing going there. Actually, it does kind of sound like a, like a, like an EDM kick drum. By the way, the last three Tomb Raider games are free in Epic Store. Okay, cool. Oh, I'll definitely grab those. I always look at the Tomb Raider games and I'm like, I want to play it, but I don't want to spend money on it. So free sounds like a, a pretty good cost. Oh, that is cool. Anyways, there you go. All right. Um, so check it out. This is my new idea for a game. So it's a battle royale, but no guns, no bullshit. It's basically like a super creepy environment, and it's like 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 a, it's like a slasher movie. 
but it's all slashers. It's all slashers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody's got like an axe or a or bunch a knife, knife or and they just have to go around and, like, and slash each other until there's one slasher left. Oh, no, 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 no. Here it is. They have to, they have to slash as many victims, as, uh, more victims than the other person. But also each other. Well, they, well, they can't do each other too, but like there also should be like, you know, slasher victims that they have to chase. Yeah. Like they're fighting. So you like, you would have two slashers fighting to kill the one victim. Yeah. It's like just however many, it's like hungry, hungry hippos, right? Yeah. But you got, you got a whole <laughs> bunch of victims, like teenage kids running around, you yeah. know what I mean? And you got other slashers with various like skins, could yeah. be hockey masks or Michael Myers masks or, or other face pig masks. masks or whatever it is, clown masks, whatever it is. And they just go around killing everything that moves and then eventually each other and whoever at the end has killed the most people and there's nobody left, that's that he wins the, the thing. And it's just just a super scary environment and they just go on. It's like the purge, only it's a battle royale. It's like the purge. <laughs> you know what? I actually like this as an idea for a game. It's that's, a great idea for a I, game. I think you might be onto something. I think people would play the shit you. out of that. I think you might be onto something there. Maybe maybe we shouldn't be talking about this on stream. <laughs> Everybody, just, uh, you know, uh, somebody for, else just heard us. Forget you ever heard yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Forget you heard a word of it. That Levine guy's on. He's, He's like, like, thanks, fellas. <laughs> I was just Googling my name when your stream came up, and now I have my next hit. And then all of the people that works on it, he's like, you motherfuckers, he's yeah. changing it again. Yeah, I know. He's like, we're trying to put out a game here, and now we got to make Hungry Hungry Hippos the slasher? <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, we're just spitballing over here. Either that or that's the idea that saves the company. They're like, this idea is way better than all those other ideas. <laughs> we're on board with this now. I, would, I mean, that's not, it's not a bad idea. It, that could be a lot of fun, especially, like, if you... Because I guess maybe the way that I envision it is that, like, you... It's kind of like your standard uh, multiplayer, like, you know, versus thing where... You kill you kill somebody and it counts as like one kill. Yeah. But then like all of the innocent people, innocent non people that you kill or whatever, kind of is a multiplier effect. So like yeah. <laughs> for every for every five people that you kill, that counts as one kill. So like maybe I only killed your slasher like twice, but I killed a whole sea of innocent people. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And as the multiplier effect, it gives me more kills than, than you or somebody else, right? So yeah, that, and it's just like it's crazy gory, you know. Crazy. It's like it's like it's disturbing. You just like bashing. It's just like comically ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. But it's also really scary too, right? So like the environments are really super scary. So there's actually it's actually scary to play, you know. I'm, Unlike Fortnite, which isn't scary at all. I mean, scary. I wonder how scary it would look at that. Because, like, to me, just describing it sounded very comical. Like, I think it would be better if it was scary. It, it, the... Ah! She just kept poking him in his face until eventually it went through his face. I'm thinking real hard now. Would it be better for that to have a comedic angle or a horror angle? Oh, dude, she totally came back and she won. This is, seems like this is your character of choice. That's making me worried because I, I do my worst against her. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Maybe I, I'm, I might not have to go to the emergency room after <laughs> that. Well, well I, I mean, so I don't know, man. Like We got somebody else on the stream. I don't right? think that it's that... Spammer, maybe? Oh, I already... Uh, yeah, that, that's like a bot I uh, blocked already. Oh, uh, damn. It's not a slasher, but there's Naraka now and Battle Royale titles with Kung Fu and Kung Fu weapons. It sounds, really, it sounds pretty cool. It, it looks, looks pretty cool. cool. Okay, wait. Nara yeah, Nara Naraka. Naraka. Huh. I think it'd be kind of cool if it was like old school Kung Fu, the game, where you could just hold your leg up and guys would just, just run in. Just march and it fall to your off foot. the screen. <laughs> Kung Fu. Okay, that sounds cool. Kung Fu Battle Royale. Alright, I'm gonna give this guy an aggressive AI with a razor sharp sword. And I'm also gonna do it. There's something about the uh, hanging corpses that kind of motivates my will to. It's like the most end up like them. witcher like environment. It is. So that graphic, Ooh. that graphic that you put up on uh, on your on our Witcher uh, rewrite that we did was that actually from the 
From the cast? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, that was post-season okay. one. I kind of feel bad, man. Yeah, I know. I mean, I saw that. Like, I didn't know that that image existed until I was making that thumbnail. Because uh, I think I just Googled uh I liked We Know the Dragon Suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, as long as they're aware. You know? I mean, I mean there's a... There's a it, it, Oh, I still, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still stand by everything we said. Uh, everything I said, I still I stand by. But, you know, it's like, again, you never know what it's like. It's like when people criticize me, m a music in a commercial or something. It's like, you don't know what, uh, you know, it's like, p uh, yeah, I might have done the music, but I might have had a bunch of notes that were from exactly. the creative director. It might exactly. have had nothing to do with... And, like, I mean? for, for the writers in particular, like, you, you never know... What gets changed during shoots, what gets changed after dailies, what gets changed in the editing room even. Or what uh, the network says needs to happen. Yeah, and what the, I mean? like, you know, after you put something together and, like, a producer or whatever is like, uh, can we not do that or can we do it this way or whatever. Like, there's a whole multitude of things that can affect how someone's written script uh, can differ once it's actually up on screen. So. I mean, for all we know... They, and they don't they, have anything to do with the dragon. Like, well, no. They shouldn't... Yeah. For all we know, they might have turned in a first season, that, a second season series of scripts that were exactly what we were talking about, and the network could have said, guys, we're looking for one narrative through line. We need epicness. We want bigness. We want epic. We want the fate of the world and the balance. And we want to tie in Witcher 3. we got to get to the wild hunt. You know, and they're like, okay, well... How do we do that? And it's every single thing they did, every single thing they wrote. It's like, okay, can we get something about the wild hunt in here? You know what I mean? Like, what about those? What about those witches in the woods? Those witches in the woods are pretty scary. Can we do something like that? It's like, well, I mean, those witches in the woods. I mean, maybe we could have like a witch in the woods. Oh, love it, a witch in the woods. You know, just one witch. Three witches is too much. Just one witch. You know, it's like maybe we can just have her, have her be from the wild hunt. You know what I mean? Like maybe she just becomes the guy at the end. And they're like. That, that doesn't even make any sense. It's like, yeah, well, you know what? You're doing it. You know? Like, <laughs> and then I, mean, I imagine if you were in that environment and you were a writer and you made that, you got through it, you made the show, and then you have to watch two guys who haven't written dick, you know, sit in the thing and basically say everything that you already know about your season, it'd be pretty frustrating. Yeah, I mean, shit, man. Are you kidding me? I've done that in the gaming industry for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite things was um, uh, one of the games I worked on was ReCore for the Xbox One. And I remember shortly after we launched that game, uh, and I've got, I, I have a lot to say about that game. Um, and the, particularly I have a lot to say about the production of that game. But um, shortly after it was launched, Honest Trailers did like an Honest Trailers thing oh, of, yeah. of the game. And I sat there, I watched it, and was like, yep, 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 that's true, that's true. That's absolutely true, I know exactly what caused that. It's like, well, and, and like uh, the biggest point of contention with that game was how buggy it was. And I was like, yeah, it's the Unity engine being asked to do something that the Unity engine was never meant to do. And we had to make it do it under super tight timelines, right? Yeah. So, like, there's going to be bugs involved. I mean, that's just a part of it. But, um. I don't even know. I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think. Of all the games I've worked on, is there a game that, A, I was proud of or really liked, and B, got panned? I think that's the combo. Yeah, because I think, like, you would, like, to really feel, like, an unequivocal sense of, like, what the fuck, you would have to feel like, this was exactly the way I wanted it to go. This couldn't have been done any better, like, we delivered. And yeah. then have someone be like, eh, bullshit. You that's, I mean? Yeah, that's kind of the, that's, that's the one-two combo right there. Are you, what are you talking about right now? The, the game? No, what you just oh, said. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 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 your, your, your manner of speech, your, 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 your metaphors or whatever, they, yeah. they could work over many, many different things. No, 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 no. Your, your so, idioms, sorry. I mean, I've experienced the opposite where there was a game that I worked on where I was like, this sucks. And then it released and everyone's like, this game's awesome. So I know that one. Um, you know what? I think that when I was at NCSoft, they put out Tabula Rasa. 
Yeah. And that game, I wouldn't say that it was panned or anything, but it was met with a resounding meh. Totally. And it didn't really last very long. And I was kind of bummed out by that. I thought that that game was a, a lot more fun than people gave it credit for. And I remember when we wound down those servers the last time, I was kind of bummed out about it. Because we were actually, there were a lot of things. There were a lot of criticisms about the game that were legitimate. And, you know, we were raising the concerns as well. And by the time that they were winding those servers down, they started implementing all of those, or not all, but a lot of the things that we thought the game really needed to put it, you know, at the next level. You know, because at, you know, at the time it was still, it was still chasing wild. Oh, dude, but, uh, that was an absolutely brutal <laughs> fight. They're just punching each other, dude. That was insane. I wasn't even paying attention. I was. I, was, I know you were. You were like I was, I was, really was, spilling your heart. Was, <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> me and this chick are just like cutting each other apart. You know. I'm like here, like weaving a narrative. <laughs> No, I think Tabula not so... Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. Oh, she got you on that one. Yeah, she did. She got backed me into a corner. Man, I gotta say, my signature move that was just wrecking that last guy is not working on her at all. She is What's here your, for it. What is your signature move? I can't tell you that. The poke? <laughs> it, it, well, that's one of them. But. I'll tell you this much. Uh, hit the... Oh, she just kicked the shit out of me. Yeah. Oh, I you, won. You I don't know barely, how I won. You barely dude. got away with that I one. I did. Uh, and by the time that they were trying to push to get the game released... Um, you know, we had, our, I think our studio general manager had, had resigned. Um, and All right. Why does that happen? Why does... Why would a studio, why would a guy who's working on a game, who's making a ton of money, who's been in it for a while, why does he just quit? Because that happens a lot. You see, like, you know, it's like... Well, you, you, you occasionally see that in film. You occasionally see that in film, right? But not a lot. I mean, usually a director takes the ship all the way in. You know what I mean? Well, and I think it happens for the same reason it would happen in the film, and that is that they get pushed out. Like, I think that, you know, after a certain level of failure to deliver on milestones and, and going over budget and continuing to fail to deliver on milestones and whatnot, um, the guys that, that control the purse strings will make the decision, okay, it's time to get somebody to run this studio who is going to be capable of cracking a whip on these workers the way that we need them to in order to reach these deadlines. Um, and I don't really think it's too far beyond that. Um, I think the studio uh, Bioware pandemic at the time was formed by Gordon and Rich. And I don't think that... I, I, I don't have I don't have like I'm not privy to to the executive level conversations, but I didn't get a sense that there was like an incredible amount of acrimony or bad blood when you know as to when Gordon's departure uh, happened at least uh, maybe a little bit more so with Rich, but when Gordon left I don't I don't believe it was that way. Um, now when I I worked there for six years and over the course of those six years we had six different general managers. Wow. So. There was just a lot of, of dysfunction that was happening at running that place. Uh, well, like 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 specifically, like I mean, give an example of, of, of how that might, how that might work, like of what the dysfunction. Yes, of like that would that would lead to. Oh my God, he, he like he just kind of lurched back. Well, I remember when um, probably the most prominent example that sticks out in my mind was um, when. So, Star Wars The Old Republic launches, and, you know, it does what it did at first, and, you know, there was a panic among uh, the executives at, at uh, EA that it wasn't going to be able to make its money back. So, you know, the decision was made to make the title free-to-play uh, and have a bunch of uh, microtransactions in it. You know, the little store that we can sell our own little currency and yeah. et cetera. That seemed to be EA's panacea for a while until it yeah. became a big problem for them. Well, it worked beautifully for Star Wars. Like, it really turned 
the uh, the MMO around. I mean, it's, it's still running today. Um, but a lot of people, by the time that that had, that had happened, you know, we had had at least two gargantuan layoffs, and the people who were still there had been working on a Star Wars game for six, seven, eight years at some. I think maybe six, seven years at that point, maybe eight in some regards. And people were just burnt out on it. And our general manager at the time, Jeff Hickman, um, he didn't want, like, he, from from just, you know, doing all hands meetings and whatnot, he, and just talking casually around the office, you know, he, he was kind of disgruntled with, you know, the boomer bust development cycle of blockbuster game development. Um, you know, laying a bunch of people off and, you know, then having to hire a bunch of people on and then having to lay a bunch of people off. And, you know, trying to combat the kind of studio morale that gets crushed when that occurs at the same time as, you know, you're trying to roll people or, or get people, you know, rolled on to new elements of that game that they've been working on for six years and they're feeling kind of bored with. People who work at Bioware don't want to, or people who work at Bioware at that time didn't want to work there because they wanted to support an MMO forever. You know, yeah. They worked there because they wanted to make badass games. They wanted to make, you know, the next Dragon Age or the next Mass Effect or the next Jade Emperor, or or they wanted to make Code Four Three. That was really the thing. They wanted to make Code Four Three. You know, so it was kind of like he, he came up with an, an idea to kind of placate both of those sides. Like he wanted to create out of the many people that we still had working at Bioware at the time, he wanted to create three kind of mini studios within Bioware and have them constantly be working on smaller projects so that when one project was released you could roll people from one project to the next and then roll keep having like three concurrent projects where people can just keep rotating in and out yeah. so they're always working on something new and what they're working on isn't like a gargantuan blockbuster that could make or break a studio like yeah. they're kind of mid-level games and that's what Shadow Realm was supposed to be so like Shadow Realms right? Shadow Realms yeah so he, uh, you know, we were using the Frostbite engine. Uh, it was one of the first internal applications of it, and we had used a bunch of Dragon Age assets because we didn't want to like spend a lot of time building our own assets from nothing. So, you know, we put together a demo on what Shadow Realm. It seems like you like. could do that, and come, like and no one would know as long as you just design new creatures and stuff. Like you yeah. can totally use the castles and the trees. Oh yeah, for certain, sure. and we did. And it looked cool, and people were excited about it. And, um, you know, we debuted the game uh, at GamesCon in Germany. And people were about, or fucking amped about it. People were signing up to, to be a part of, like, the, uh, the beta whenever we went live with the beta and you know, all that sort of stuff. And we had been hearing nothing but good whenever we put the game up in front of EA executives and getting greenlit to keep continuing development and all that, we have been hearing nothing but great things about it. But eventually they came to the decision that EA's business model was not about small games. They wanted to release big blockbusters um, and focus only on, or mainly on big blockbusters. So with that, they canceled Shadow Realm. And with canceling Shadow Realm, you know, they did another round of layoffs. You know, the one thing we were definitely trying to avoid. And that really crushed morale. That pretty much killed it, you know, flat out. And shortly after that happened, uh, I, uh, uh, Jeff, I guess, I don't know if resign is the right word, <laughs> but he moved. I just carved this guy to pieces just then. <laughs> I mean, like, I punched him, I slashed him, and I just stabbed him, and he just, like, went down. All right, we were saying... Yeah, shortly after that happened, uh, Jeff moved on from being the general manager at, at, at Bioware. He was still with EA. He was doing other stuff with EA, but he just kind of like walked away from Bioware at that time as a general manager. So, I mean, in that regard, it was just like a factor of like a function of, uh, you know, having a vision and then having your vision crushed you know, yeah. for no... And so they had, basically, it was just like, they were just like, this is, we don't want to make these small games. We're not yeah. going to make money on this. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, it's like, this game will come out, we'll have to put it out, it'll do okay, and then we'll be on to whatever is next. But Which is funny, because, like, they eventually, they're kind of, like, living in two worlds right now, where they do put out big games, but they then also put out games like A Way Out, you know? And it's like, there's no reason why... 
you can't have a game like A Way Out and also a game like Battlefield, you know, and I think maybe they're kind of starting to find that balance. Maybe they're moving more towards that area, but uh, I would say that our experimentations with trying to do that at, at that studio at Bioware Austin, um, you know, was a, was a direct uh, uh, counteraction to having our studio been crushed by, by burnout and by mass layoffs. And then once our efforts to kind of work around that were crushed, then that's when that GM resigned. So, I mean, it's a number of reasons why, why a GM would resign, but you know, if you have the pedigree that somebody who is a studio manager has, then you have the leeway to quit and do something else, work somewhere else if you want. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing too. It's like, <clears throat> I think a lot of people in the video game industry, because like once you're in, it's such an insular industry, and once you've worked on a couple of games, you can pretty much get hired anywhere else. You know what yeah. I mean? And so it's like, I think that a lot of people in the game industry like get somewhere and if things just kind of get stagnant or whatever, or their boss is kind of a dick, they're gone. They're out the door. You know yeah. what I mean? That's certainly the way of my experience. Like when I was at Edge of Reality, dude, it was like we were losing people every day. You know, people like, oh, so-and-so, he just took off to go over to, you know, to go over to Bioware or whatever. And we're like, what, what was the problem? Oh, I think he just got sick of being over here. You know, and it's just like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, but I it's just reading this article about Levine just seems like, you know, is it really worth it to keep this guy at this level? Like, how much money has he lost on this project that's been in development since 2014? I know that, like, Bioshock, that's a that's a game, that's a brand that it, it made a lot, it meant a lot for Take-Two. Fill up real quick, There's, you're, this is a... Levine gathered the Irrational Games staff. Who, well, okay, who, Irrational made something. What, what am I thinking of? What did they make? Bioshock. Oh, that was Bioshock? Yeah. Um, and the office in Quincy, Massachusetts, their last game had come out a year earlier, and it wasn't clear why they hadn't yet heard about the next one. Levine gave them an answer. With trembling hands and tears in his eyes, he said he was shutting down the studio and laying off almost the entire staff. I guess if he's actively crying, people probably don't be like, you know, but it could be an act. The announcement was unexpected and abrupt. See, that's the problem. You know, it's like I understand that kind of shit happens, and it's and it's like, it's sad when it. You know, it's like it's like, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. But to me, if you're the studio owner, and I guess it's it's a really tough call because you're like, if I tell people what's going on, they might jump shit, which makes it worse, and then I can't pull it off. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like that. What what what? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones says in uh, first. Then a black movie where he's like, it's always a you know a space laser, a galaxy ending bomb or whatever it is. The only reason that people can deal with it is because they don't know about it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the idea that you know it's like uh, probably being in a game studio, having a development studio, you're probably uh, different periods on the brink of things collapsing uh, and he, several times, and he was able to weather it. But if you tell everybody and let them know, so they can start figuring stuff out. You, you're pretty much guaranteeing your, your, the destruction of the company, you know? But it just seems like there's got to be a way so that people aren't just so fucking surprised. Because it's like, that's a really bad... The game industry is notorious for that shit. Like, people showing up to work and the door's being locked. Like, sorry, fuck you! You know what I mean? It's like... Well, yeah. I mean... They... It, there are instances where they tell people, like, there'll be layoffs... Like in advance, and those are or those aren't ever met with like any additional sense of like appreciation or grace. I mean, in, in fact, people people you know will say about that like, oh, so you're gonna lay me off, but still expect me to show up to work, you know? And you know, there are situations where you know people who know that they're about to be fired, who have been told that they're about to lose their job, you know, will. Act according, I guess, accordingly. Well, when my they point is, have you, access to shit at work. Maybe so. you don't tell them that they're going to be fired, but you tell them, "Hey, there's this a good is... possibility there's going to be some layoffs. Things are pretty rough, and you, I want you all to know that anybody can, you can, any of us can go." That's you, know I mean? you see, but that's but that creates a... pessimism, skepticism, mm -hmm. and fear. Mm -hmm. Like that's 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 mm -hmm. how Disney kind of operates, where they like tell people like, "Look, none of you guys are safe." At any given moment, we can get the word from our board that we need to trim the fat. 
and from over here you're all looking pretty fatty so you know just just keep that in mind and then you keep especially at a place you know like disney or, or any of these other places where people like it's prestige to work there um you're never going to have a lack of people wanting to get in so that it creates that that extra incentive i guess to do whatever is asked of you in order to retain your job like they use that kind of overarching threat of layoff to keep its workforce in line so i mean that would be one reason why i would say you shouldn't give general vague here all on the chopping block um I mean, if the whole company is going under, you know what I mean? I, I guess that... I just, I mean, there's not really, there's not really a good way to do it, honestly. Like, they're really, like, from my past experience, if a layoff is going to happen, you do hear about it unofficially through other channels, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. It, it'll work its way out, and people will start hearing about it, and then, like, when it happens... It's not really a surprise to most people in the company. Yeah. Like, very rarely does a layoff happen and people are, like, legitimately stunned by it. So, I mean, there are ways that that gets communicated go. out. This has been fun. Wishing you guys an awesome new year. You too. Hey, cool. Thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, it was thanks for hanging out. You. For sure. Stop by again next time if uh, we happen to be on when you're up there in Portugal. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked what I said, what Justin said, if you like the content we're providing, if you had any kind of laughs at all, even if you hate us, if you hate my guts, if you want to stab me, if you want to say all sorts of horrible things to me, cool. Like, like the video, subscribe. You'll get fed all sorts of shit you'll probably hate. And if you like us, you'll get fed all sorts of shit you probably like. So please and thank you.